I'm going to welcome on board Pirocha Godrej from Godrej Properties as well and get in a few answers going on how their earnings pan out, what's the kind of visibility that they see, especially in light of all that the Maharashtra government is doing to try and prop up realty sales. It's important to take cognizance of what Godrej Properties is up to, considering a large part of their sales comes from this region. So, uh, Pirocha Godrej, then executive chairman at Godrej Properties. Uh, and uh, Pirosha, in your previous interaction with us, uh, you'd mentioned that given the lack of launches in the quarter gone by, you were penciling in a weakish revenue recognition this quarter. In that context, take us through how the quarter has been for you and what were the key challenges that you faced? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the quarter was a bit of a mixed bag. I think, as you rightly pointed out on the reported PNL numbers, I think they clearly weren't very uh, exciting as we haven't completed too many projects during the quarter, or even this financial year so far, uh, partially because of the disruption in the first six months uh, to construction schedules due to the lockdown. Um, but actually, from an operating perspective, we're quite happy with the, with the quarter and with the year gone by so far. Our bookings during the third quarter were at, at just under 1,500 crore, which was a growth a year on year of 25% and quarter on quarter of about 38%. Um, and our year-to-date bookings now have grown by about 16%, which I think is quite credible given the, the, the you know, challenges we've had over the year. What's also you know, exciting to note is that the fourth quarter is shaping up to be our best ever qu quarter from a bookings perspective. We have something like 12 launches that we hope to execute over this quarter in all parts of the country. And if we're able to get the regulatory approvals for all of those in time, we're quite confident that this will be our best ever quarter from a bookings perspective, which will set us up nicely, I think, for, for the year ahead. Right. Pirosha, tell me about your fundraising plans. We understand that you're looking to raise about 3,750 crore rupees via QIP. What is it that you're going to be using these funds for? Yeah, so, you know, this is for now just an enabling resolution that the board passed in its meeting today. I think if, we, if and when we decide to move forward with this, the rationale is that we actually think it's a very unique moment uh, that we're faced with in the real estate sector where we're actually starting to see the upturn unfold. If you look at both our own numbers as well as other leading developers' numbers for the third quarter, you'll see considerable sales momentum. But at the same time, you have a situation where most developers in the sector are faced with quite constrained liquidity, which is actually creating an opportunity to acquire land parcels for them at what we think would be very value accretive um, valuation. So, so I think if we did decide to raise the capital, the idea would be to deploy it all into new development opportunities and thereby expedite the process of consolidation that has been underway in the industry and that we've been benefiting from already over the last few years. Sure. Uh, surprisingly, there has been uh, an improvement in offtake across price points in both the mid-income as well as the high-end uh, segments. That's for most players in the last two quarters. Um, you know, would you agree? Is that correct? Because this hasn't been the case now for almost nine years. Uh, you know, what's your on-ground experience been like? Yes, I think it's it's very clear from the data that things are starting to pick up. Frankly, I don't find it that surprising. We've actually now been in a, about a six or seven year downturn in the real estate sector, which has meant that there's been a lot of creation of pent up demand, but people have been waiting for the right moment. We've had one uh, sort of shock to the sector after another, whether it was you know the introduction of RERA at one point, then the NBFC liquidity issues, and a variety of other things that have sort of postponed this recovery. But now what you're seeing is that affordability in the sector is the best it's been perhaps ever because you have interest rates at all time lows, you have property prices having been flat now for seven, eight years, you have people's income obviously having increased over that time. So for affordability is, is, is very good. You have a lot of pent up demand, as I mentioned. Um, and I think what had been missing was this positive sentiment towards the sector. And I think one of the impact that we've seen from this pandemic, not just in India, but around the world, is that as people have been forced to spend more times in their, in their homes, I think the importance of homeownership and the stability that homeownership offers 
has only risen in a customer's mind. So you're starting to see, I think, the confluence of all of those things working towards the sector's favor. And actually, again, not a great surprise because this is a cyclical sector. You do typically have multiple years of downturn followed typically by you know, a revival in demand. And because during that time, supply starts getting constrained, you then see uh, both volumes and prices starting to move up. So we think we're in the initial stages of the next leg of the cycle and therefore hope to see a positive few years for the sector ahead. Okay, just to mention that yet uh, we're at an all-time high on the Sensex already at records. Uh, Nifty surpassing 15,000, Sensex now hitting 51,000. There's really been no stopping it this week. And we are continuing to ride those record highs this morning and just shortly after opening that too. So yet another milestone, Sensex up 400 points today. Piyosha, tell us about the boost that the housing sectors receive from the budget as well. Multiple reliefs have been extended. Um, the affordable housing boost also continues. A focus there intact. Uh, real estate affordability continues to be the tailwind. Yeah, I thought it was an excellent budget. Clearly, you know, very focused on growth-led policies, which I think is absolutely the right decision. I think what we need to focus on in the short term is making sure India's economy is firing on all cylinders. While there were some specific benefits to the real estate sector, such as the extension for another year of income tax benefits for affordable housing projects, really, I think the big benefit to the sector came from the pro-growth nature of the overall budget and the benefit that will bring to the economy. That, which I think will result in, you know, the highest ever GDP growth next year, obviously on a low base. But I think that overall economic sentiment and animal spirits in the economy taking uh, center stage will disproportionately benefit a sector like real estate, which is very dependent on consumer sentiment. In addition to that, I think the huge push the government has made on infrastructure um, is again something that will greatly benefit this sector because as more roads are built, as more metro lines are created, you have new spaces and avenues that open up from a real estate development perspective. So I think those two aspects of the budget were what I think are most important uh, from the real estate sector's perspective. And I think it was great to see from a taxation perspective, stability, I think there's been probably too much tinkering around and movement in, in various rates over the past few years. So I think that... Uh, steadfastness and stability in tax policy despite the challenging year and fiscal constraints the government is under was a very welcome um, development. Right. Uh, Pirosha, there have been significant triggers when it comes to REITs uh, as a structure in the budget this time around. What's your opinion on the same? Uh, what would be an area that uh, Goddard's properties would be willing to diversify in or target? You know, I think it's very commendable what the government has done over the last couple of years in terms of making REITs in India feasible. We've already started to see the benefits of that for the overall economy and for the sector. The Brookfield REIT that is about to list uh, over the next few days is going to be the third publicly listed REIT in the country all over the last uh, 12 or so months. And I think that's, you know, a welcome way to add liquidity to the sector, a welcome way to create exits for developers who are then able to reinvest that capital into new projects, which in turn create new jobs and economic activity. So I think it's a, it, it's been an exceptionally positive development for the overall Indian economy. We do actually at Goodridge already have a commercial real estate platform, which, we, uh, which Goodridge Properties is doing in partnership with our real estate private equity business, Goodridge Fund Management, which is leading uh, commercial business investments. Um, so over a, over a medium term, we do think REITs are one way, one way that we could exit such a, a platform and is certainly something that we're keeping an eye on, but no immediate plans for a REIT over the next couple of years. Okay, Pirosha, lastly, given the mismatch that we've seen in demand supply scenario with supply uh, outpacing, outpacing demand for many years, do you think budget and home affordability would reduce this mismatch in the realty market? Real estate as a sector is actually poised now to do very well. And I do expect uh, 
for the current calendar year to be an outstandingly strong one for the sector as a whole. But I don't expect that all individual players will benefit equally from it. I think a large number of factors, including uh, individual companies' ability to access customers, ability to access capital in a cost-efficient manner, is driving the sector very rapidly towards consolidation. That's not something that's a new phenomenon, frankly. We've been seeing that over the last four, five, six years already. But what's going to happen now with, I think, the challenges that we've seen in the last year um, is that liquidity is going to be continue to be constrained for a large part of the sector, which will lead to larger players taking over many of these projects and therefore lead to consolidation. So I expect in some to see the overall sector growing rapidly, but most of that growth or a large part of that growth being captured by, by the leading developers in each market. All right, Parosha, thanks so much for joining us on that this morning.